Praise the Lord. It's so good to be back with you and continuing to reflect on words in the Bible. You know, as we've said, words are there to help strengthen us, to build us up. And also, by the way we're studying words, is help us to give a, a bigger picture of a particular word or words or grouping of words. And so welcome to Discipleship Empowerment Words <laughs> Study. We're just so glad to be with you. And uh, I was thinking yesterday as we continue to uh, look at this word holy and holiness, the big picture is such a huge picture, how it's related to other words around it and what it means. And I couldn't help but think, I know I when I mentioned this to you before that uh, Bridges for Peace, they put out a little, uh, I guess, booklet or teaching letter every month. And uh, we happen to get it. And so we enjoy reading it. And one of the teaching letters that they had was on the subject of being holy or be holy. And I like, just as a reminder, we've talked about this off and on before. And uh, sometimes as we go along, we uh, maybe lose sight of the definition of sometimes of the word. And uh, they said in here, and, and we've already commented on this many, many times, but the idea of holy, uh, when it is made holy, now God is already holy, but when it comes to holy things or made holy, there often was an, an anointing process and a covering and a and an adding blood to whatever it may be a high priest or uh something that uh, like the uh, holy uh tabernacle or the holy incense or the holy altar or the holy testimony uh mercy seat all those things had been anointed with not only a holy oil, but also with a holy blood. And I think, uh, and and the reason and and uh, that we need to look at this is like the definition that they used here. The idea of holiness was to separate, to make distinct or elevate, that the natural should be evaluated or elevated to by the spiritual. So it's taking that which was natural. Of course, we know God is spiritual and in God, all things are holy. His character, his nature, and everything is holy. And so uh, for us to have holy fellowship, we have to come into his presence, be anointed by the Holy Spirit, be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. All these, um, the bigger picture is so important in our walk. And the reason why we're looking at that today is because when we go into Ezekiel, we go back again and Ezekiel is going to do a lot of focusing on in his book about the holy name of God. And uh, I think we take that very lightly, this whole, idea, this whole concept of name and how his name is to be holy. Now, often in the Jewish history, they wouldn't even pronounce the name Jehovah the name God, because it was so holy. Only somebody, they thought only somebody who was holy could pronounce the name holy or pronounce the name God. And so it was unique that way. And, and uh, you're going to see in a minute why it's so important to how Ezekiel wanted the people of God, the people of Israel, to get back to the holy name of God, to get back and recognize, because the idea of name is like a title or a label. It's a title tells you, you know, we're going to James Humphreys' house today. So we know the house belongs to James Humphreys, and we know if we know him, we know where he lives, and we will go to that place because of the title of the name we don't say to somebody we just well we're just going to go to a house today we could but if we wanted to go to a specific house then we need to put a name on it and it's same with the house of the lord or the house of prayer 
all all these these descriptive words are there and the descriptive word is to is basically here in this case to elevate or not only to elevate but to separate to make distinction to make something clear from that which was unholy to that which is holy or from that which is unclean to that which is clean and so i i want to emphasize this because uh we're going to look at ezekiel chapter 36 uh a number of verses and we're going to also if that time allows us to go into not only 36 but 39 and the issue of both of these chapters that get pointed out to the people of Israel through the prophet of Ezekiel is concerning God's holy name and how they have twisted it through transgressions and disobedience and iniquities. They have twisted it and not reverenced the holy name of God. And so in the renewal of Israel, when Israel is being encouraged to come back in renewal and revival, it's interesting. One of the things that they needed to come back to is a greater understanding of the holy name of God, his holy name. And I think that's important because I want to I want to spend some time on this, and and that's why uh, it becomes such a foundation. Because if you were to go into the New Testament, which we will, uh, you would see a multiple verses that talk about the importance of the name of Jesus Christ. You know, at, at, at you know at His name, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess, and. I can say that in the maybe the North American or even the churches around the world, we have lost the understanding of the power of a name and why it's so important to keep our name clean, as it were, as a representative not only of us and our family, our family name. And Throughout history, you will see that names were important. <laughs> it's interesting right now, through our nation, everybody is beginning to get fixated on names. Names here, names there, you know, who named did this and what did they do and all kinds of things. And it's interesting. And I thought, wow, isn't it interesting that Ezekiel is going to teach the people how they need to get straightened around about the name of God. And so when we look at this, let's begin to read. I, I could share a lot more, but it, more will come out over the next couple of days. But I just wanted to start off at the very beginning, putting uh, some parameters around what we're going to talk about. And, and when we, so when we talk about this whole idea of holy and holiness, it means to separate and be distinct or elevated, taken from the physical and elevated into the spiritual. And that was what was going on in the tabernacle. That's what goes, was going on in the Old Testament. But when, when Jesus Christ came along and fulfilled the Old Testament scriptures, he fulfilled that and gave a new covenant and elevated in the new covenant, the, the spiritual walk. And how did he do that? By, by sending his Holy Spirit to fill us, which would elevate us or move us into a place of relationship where we are called to be separated from the world into our Lord Jesus Christ, to make the, a distinction between the things of the world and the things of Jesus Christ. And again, to elevate it in our own lives. And as, I, I want to make sure that it's not something that we're, we're trying to do in our own strength, but it's coming to the Lord in prayer and it's realizing as we're praying and as he fills us with his Holy Spirit, as, he, as Ephesians says, there's an elevation, there is a drawing closer, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. All these things kind of begin to uh, come together. 
Okay, we're we're getting a little bit more into preaching here this morning and then word study, but that's okay. Let's go over to Ezekiel 36. And we see here in verse 16 and on, we're not going to read all the verses, but the, the there's the concept here of the renewal of Israel. And uh, he talks about that Ezekiel, that if they don't uh, do certain things, there's even going to be greater destruction. And he says in verse 18, Therefore I poured out my fury on them for the blood they had shed on the land and they and for their idols, which they um, had defiled it. So they not only defiled the, the land, they defiled everything that God had given to them. And the thing is, why was idols so imp uh, important to them? Because they were using the names of idols. If you go around today into many religions or false religions, they're lifting up some name. And they're, you know, they're bowing down to that idol and its name. Uh, I live a lot in a country over in Asia where there is a lot of other kinds of false religions. And uh, you can go to this one temple. There's got to be at least a thousand gods. And they all have specific names for specific purposes. <laughs> So you always just go in and you talk to the priest. I've, I've got a an ailment here or I got a headache. And he would say, make an offering until that idol or make an offering and, and use this name. Well, God wanted to share and tell there was no other name under heaven, but the name, the holy name of God. And in the New Testament, it's the holy name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name. That's why Jesus could stand up and say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's interesting how they had used blood and, and, and worshipped their idols. So he says in verse 19, because of that, so I've scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed throughout the countries. We know that the 12 tribes have been dispersed and scattered out. He says, I judged them according to their ways and their deeds. How they were living? He says, I'm going to judge them according to their ways, the way they were going, and the actions, the deeds that they were keeping. I'm going to judge them. And we know that he is a holy judge. So if the holy judge is speaking to us about our unholy deeds and ways, we know we're in trouble already. But it, it, the key verses come along a little bit further here in verse 20. He says, and when they came to the nation's Wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. And we get this idea of profaned my holy name four times. It gets used four times right here. That's why we're taking time to look at it today. It's used in verse 20, 21, 22, and 23. And God is taking issue because, in a sense, what people are doing, the people of Israel, they're taking his holy name and, as it were, grinding it in the dirt, making it polluted and filthy. And, and instead of a sweet-smelling incense, it becomes a, a, a dirty smell, a dirty name. And so he says here, he says um, in verse 20, when it came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. And when they said of them, these are the people of the Lord, and they, and yet they have gone out of his land. Now, before we go on, they profaned his holy name. So the key word that we need to get, we, we know that name is a title. It's a label. It's a distinction. It can be a characteristic. It can be an attribute in God's case. And then we get this whole idea of holy, which means to separate, to elevate, or to show distinction. And then when we get to this word defamed, we need to see that it means uh, uh, disrespectful, blasphemed, wicked, slanderous, evil speaking, uh, it brings disgrace and dishonor. And I was thinking about this as I was in in my second culture that I live in, 
we have a word that's close to this word. It's it's a little bit pronounced differently. But there is in the Kachin people the word honor. 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 I'm not even, my wife is correcting me already. But the way of that same word is the same word that we use over here. It shows that we are elevating and showing respect and honor to a person's name. And when we defame it, we're showing disgrace and dishonor. Does that make sense, Cohen? She's sitting across the room listening. Because that's that's so important. And still in some nations, the idea of, of the name is important. And, and uh, you can do a thousand right things, but you do one wrong thing, and your name could fall into disgrace or dishonor. And here, so the idea means to slander, to speak evil. Of. Can you imagine that? When the people were, were sent out, were dispersed because of their wickedness and their disobedience, they continued on defaming the name of God, uh, continuing to, to slander and to speak evil of God. And to bring disgrace. And I'm thinking like, wow, you know, as believers, we need to come to the place where we're not bringing disgrace, but we're bringing grace of God to the people. And we're not showing dishonor, but we're showing honor and respect to God's people. You know, we're, we're, we're bringing them to a place that it's important and in some ways, uh, when I was thinking about this, even in the whole marriage thing, there is a naming. Well, I mean, you know, we use the name in marriage. And, and so, you know, uh, I don't know where it comes from, but often in the, in the marriage, the, the one of the things you do after the end of the wedding ceremony, you know, you would say, uh, the two have become one. And now for the very first time, I can name you as James and Call Win Humphreys. That we have our individual names, but our surname becomes one under one surname. And I know that gets challenged by a lot of people. <laughs> I'll probably even get an email about that today, but <laughs> whatever. But that's the way it was customary because the, the, the surname had a certain title and respect to it. And so the two were becoming one under that name. And in many cultures, the, the surname is so important. You know, I have been honored by give, been given a new name in Israel, or I'm going to say in Israel, that I am too probably. But in the people, the Kachin people, my name is uh, Lata Zosam. And, uh, Lata is my family name, and it was be it was an honor to be part of that family, and it was unique that I didn't want to bring disgrace or dishonor to my Ketchin family name. And so I I know I'm I'm hammering on this a long time here, but I let's go on, because he says when they came to the nations wherever they went they profaned my holy name. Then in verse twenty one. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations where they went. God was saying, you're, you're saying things about my holy name, which is not who I am. If you would really understand my holy name, you would understand who I am, who my character is, who my nature is. What I am when it comes to concerning grace and righteousness, if you would just grasp that name, you would under, you would begin to see that under him, all people, all nations, all tongues, all tribes, you know, that every knee will bow. All these things will happen because of his holy name. He goes on in verse 22, Therefore say to the house of Israel, so God is now saying to Ezekiel to say to Israel, okay, this is what's going on. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I did not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. 
So God was saying, because you have taken my name and you have destroyed it wherever you went, judgment was now coming upon you because you have taken my name and made it as a disgrace. You profaned it. You blasphemed it. You've made it wicked amongst the nations. And now I'm going to deal with you because of that. So he goes on. A verse 23, and I will sanctify my great name. So what had happened? It had become polluted, his name, become dirty, not holy amongst the people. It always remained holy amongst him as God. But amongst the people, it had become unholy. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned amongst the nations, which you have profaned in the midst and in the nations, shall know that I am the Lord. So he goes on to say, what I'm going to do now, because you've done this, God said, I'm going to sanctify my name again, and it is no more going to be polluted amongst the nations and be blasphemed amongst the nations. Because he says, the reason I'm doing that, because I am the Lord. Now, here's something that goes on. We may not pick up because that I am the Lord goes back to Exodus chapter 3 when Moses was told to take off his shoes because he was on holy ground because he was standing before a holy God and Moses said to him what should I tell the people who you are and he said to him go tell them that I am that I am has sent you so here's the holy name I am that I am Jesus picks up on this when he talks about, I am the way, the truth. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. I am the alpha and the mega. All that, see it there. We don't quite get the power of that name. When Jesus stood up and said, I am the good shepherd, it made all the Pharisees, Sadducees, and religious people want to kill him. Because he was taking the name, the holy name of God, and, and, and referring it back to who he is. And they thought that was blasphemy. That's why, and blasphemy was the death sentence. You took him out and you stoned him from blasphemy. For blaspheming what? The holy name of God. See, this is all in the New Testament. It doesn't die. And so, that they may know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. So in this idea of hollow, he says that when you have brought me back in the midst of your eyes and have made me holy, they will know then that I am that I am. You know, God has chosen to use us to be vessels of his holiness to the nations. That's what being missions is going out and taking the name of Jesus Christ to the nations. And that people will bow their knee and hollow his name and how he is holy and just and merciful and full of grace. He says, when I am hollowed in you before their eyes and then he says when that happened and this is where the blessing we're, we're just staying in this one verse this one section today we're not going to get to the next section we'll pick it up tomorrow because he says for i when that happens for i will take you from among the nations gather you out of all the countries and bring you to your own land this is a this is a prophecy that's being fulfilled today that when people have begun back to begin to hollow the name of God and say that we are not going to turn from God in all the nations, what God is doing is being picking up the 12 tribes of Israel and bringing them back to Israel because of his holy name. I don't know if we see it, but that's happening right in our time zone right now. You know, a couple years ago, they brought back certain people groups from China, certain people groups from India. They're bringing people back from Africa. And every, they're picking them up on the airplanes and bringing them back. Why? Because of the holy name of God, who is the God of God and the King of Kings of Israel also. And he brings them back 
to the lamb. That's what it be from. Then he goes on. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. Because you now begin to start recognizing my holy name, I will sprinkle clean water on you and shall clean and be clean. And I will clean you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. So from all your transgressions, he's talking about the people of God. Okay, remember, I like to always say, okay, is this the same problem of we as a church? Has the church been scattered? Has the church been scattered and everybody has taken off and doing their own thing and going their own way and and uh, not lifting up the name of God anymore? And he says, there's a day coming, Ezekiel, where I'm going to bring them all back. And not only am I going to bring them back, but I'm going to cleanse them and wash them so that they can be cleansed and washed how by the blood of the lamb through the forgiveness of their sins and that they will then get rid of their filthiness and lay down their idols people we have houses full of idols we have minds that are full of idols our hearts are full of things idols are things that are taking us away from god that we worship more than god are you hearing it because what does he go on and say in verse 26 how do am i speaking the truth I believe so because I'm just telling you what the scriptures are saying because it says in verse 26, after he has cleansed them and removed them from the idols, what does he say? I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. He's saying, I'm going to do something when I bring you all back. When I'm going to do, I'm going to not only bring you back, but I'm going to fill you with a heart with a heart of the spirit of god it's not going to be a heart anymore that's like a rock and cannot be penetrated but this heart is going to be a living heart of flesh that is going to be full of the spirit of god i mean we should just circle all these verses and say thank you god because this is all built on the holy name of god he goes on in verse 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. So what he's saying, I'm going to put my spirit in you and because my spirit is in you, I'm going to help you and make it possible that you can walk according to the word of God. That you can be a follower as Jesus said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He is going to change us from the inside out. We're not going to be any more a, a hard rock. But what we're going to be is have at our feet on the rock of Christ who is going to make us living flesh. That as we follow him, he is going to fill us with his spirit. And that he is going to give us the ability to keep his judgments and to keep his statutes, to keep his word. And then he says, then you will, sh you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and shall be my people and I will be your God. So there's a tremendous renewal coming on, coming to Israel. But I believe there's also a, a need for a tremendous renewal when it comes to the church. The church is being scattered. The church is, is lost its identity. The church doesn't realize that we are gathered together, not as a bunch of individuals, but as a nation under the headship of Jesus Christ, our King and our Lord. And we need to stop defaming his name, however that may be, and showing disgrace and dishonor. And, you know, a lot of times we think defaming is, oh, we've just done sin. Yes, well, these are sinful things, but showing disgrace means you're not honoring. You're not bringing, you know, it, it talks about, Jesus talks about honoring your father and mother. Showing honor, that doesn't always mean that it's easy, but that you show honor. You show grace to them as they show grace. I mean, there's so much we can say here, and we'll have to pick it up tomorrow. But I just want to get back to a, a couple little more things. I don't know if we're going to be able to finish it all. But uh, let me just point out two more things, and then we'll, we'll close her down for today. He says, I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness, because why? He is the clean one. I will call you, from, uh, call you for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. 
he was now going to start pouring out his blessing. Well, there's so much we're, we could talk about, and we will come to this again, the same chapter again. But just as we go to prayer, I want to, I'm going to skip over a bunch of verses, but we're going to go back there because I want to conclude about this holy name as we go along, holy name, holy name, to bring honor and to bring, to show forth and, 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 and receive God's grace. He says in verse 38, like a flock, like a flock offers as holy sacrifices, like the flock of at Jerusalem on its feast days, so shall the ruined cities be filled with the flocks of men. And this is what I want to conclude with. Then, the scripture says, Ezekiel says, God says, then they shall know that I am the Lord. The I am, the name of God. God needs to get all of us back to the place that we are under, empowered, and anointed in his holy name. Amen. Can you agree with that? We got tomorrow and the next day, we're going to talk more about it. But I'm so excited because I, I want I want my own life not to be a life of disgrace or dishonor to my Lord. I want my life to be a life of grace and honor to my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you're saying to Ezekiel. We thank you, Lord, how you also want to renew us, just as you're going to do a renewal for Israel. Lord, I believe you're wanting to bring renewal and revival, but Father, it means that every knee that we need to bow and we need to confess you, Jesus Christ. We need to confess your holy name. We need to realize that, Lord, that you are continuing to call us to separate, to call in, to come into your presence so that, Lord, that we can be filled with your Holy Spirit. So we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing today. And, Lord, help us not just to be hearers of your word, but, Lord, we would be doers also. And we just want to give you all the praise and thanks now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. I hope that stirred up something inside all of our hearts today and that we will come to the place of saying, yes, Lord, here am I. I worship your holy name. Let me be a vessel of the power of your Holy Spirit this day. Amen. Love you. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.